good morning girls today we are going to see about disintegration of the mughal empire okay introduction there were 17 mughal rulers who ruled for about 332 years that is from 1526 ad to 1857 ad uh, the establishment of mughal empire in 1526 from this year onwards the mughal rulers they ruled up to the year 1857 effective mughal rule lasted for about 150 years that is from the reign of akbar from 1556 to 1707 to the reign of aurangzeb that is the famous effective mughal rulers they ruled from the reign of akbar you know the akbar of akbar the great he ruled from 1556 his successors are also ruled up to the year 1707 in the year 1739 the mughal authority was confined to delhi and its surrounding areas that means the mughal authority was confined in the year 1739 this was confined to delhi only so this integration of the mughal empire uh, that uh, what were the causes what were the causes we are we are going to see about before that there was a just an introduction about the empire after aurangzeb 11 mughal rulers ruled five were murdered and uh, deposed and the last three became the pensioners of the british the last three mughal emperors namely shah alam akbar sakin and bahadur shah safar were the british pensioners the english captured delhi in 1803 this after 1739 the mughal rule was on paper and in name only that means in the year 1707 aurangzeb died this aurangzeb after his period many rulers many mughal rulers they ruled our india but they were weak and inefficient that was uh, that was remarked as the mughal rule was on paper and in name only next mughal empire now let us see about a brief uh, explanation about the mughal empire this uh, first uh, ruler of this mughal empire was babur he established he founded the mughal empire in 1526 he ruled in this india up to 1530 so in these four years he has to withstand the mughal empire that is he wanted to establish and confounded the mughal empire like he wanted to make the empire very strong and after that after babur his son uh, his successor humayun he ruled 1530 to 40 and uh, 1555 to 1556 in that place there was a question races what was the question why that 1540 to 1555 there was an interregnum in that interregnum interregnum sher shah an afghan ruler he ruled india he was also a famous ruler but he was not belong to that mughal dynasty okay and the next ruler akbar he ruled india 1556 to 1605 you know very well about this akbar he his benevolent rule by his benevolent rule he got the title akbar the great so he consolidated the empire he ruled this uh, india from 1556 to 1605 for a long period in that period many events many events occurred and uh, next ruler jahangir this jahangir he ruled from 1605 to 1627 this jahangir he gave concessions to the foreigners the this event is the most important even for the decline of the mughal empire in this period only the foreigners they came to india and the jahangir uh, they attended the court of jahangir and he gave uh, trade concessions to the britishers okay next ruler shah jahan 
you know Shah Jahan he is the uh, most important ruler in the Mughal dynasty because of his period was considered as golden period of architecture this golden period what do you mean by that Shah Jahan constructed many buildings that is many buildings you know today we are seeing that red fort that was constructed by Shah Jahan you know uh, Shah Jahan he constructed the famous uh, one of the wonders of the world that is uh, Taj Mahal okay and uh, next ruler Aurangzeb he ruled India from 1658 to 1707 he was the last strong Mughal ruler ruled over the vast empire ever ruled by an Indian ruler this after Aurangzeb 11 Mughal rulers were ruled in India and among them 5 were de murdered, deposed and last 3 were the pensioners, other were figurehead rulers. This, uh, in this Mughal empire they are all the, uh, the famous rulers. Okay, Baba, Humayun, Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb. Now we are going to see about this uh, disintegration. In that disintegration, that began disintegration process began during the reign of Aurangasi. What were the important causes of the downfall of the Mughal Empire? Aurangasib's responsibility. Aurangasib he himself followed a policy that was not liked by uh, the Rajputs, Jats and the Marathas and Sikhs and Northwest Frontier policy and foreign policy. All these policies were failed. Aurangasib he in religious policy let us take religious policy mean he reimposed the uh, Jizya tax and then he demolished many temples it was not liked by the people of India that is mainly Hindus and the Rajput policy his suppressive policy towards the Rajputs raised a revolt against Aurangzeb the Jats they were the agriculturists these agriculturists they suffered a lot under Aurangzeb's policy and the Maratha policy uh, then let us take Maratha policy means uh, rise of the Shivaji. Uh, this Aurangzeb and Shivaji they were the enemies and uh, the Marathas they wanted to establish a Hindu rule in India and the Sikh, Sikhs the Sikhs also suffered by Aurangzeb's religious policy and in the northwest frontier policy that means in the northwest Aurangzeb constructed a vigilant rule but uh, after 1707 there was after the death of Aurangzeb this northwest frontier was not in a uh, supervision of the Mughal ruler so the Aurangzeb religious policy, Rajput policy, Jack policy, Marathas and the Sikhs and uh, towards the northwest frontier all were failed. And apart from this, in addition to that, puritanic measures, he wanted to establish only Islam. His religious policy itself, it was included, but uh, he wanted to establish the whole India was under uh, Islam. So, puritanic measures led to conflicts and the rebellions which caused irreparable damage. Irreparable damage means we cannot repair damage to the Mughal power and prestige. And the next one is very weak successes of Aurangzeb. The first point, Aurangzeb, he himself was responsible for the downfall of the Mughal Empire. After Aurangzeb, the successes were very weak. That is from the death of Aurangzeb in 1707 and up to 1759, that is about a half a century, there were eight Mughal rulers. So, the eight Mughal rulers, that is Bagadur Shah, he ruled India from 1709 to 1712. Uh, he was a meager figurehead. So, headless, he was called as headless king. And Jagandar Shah, he ruled from 1712 to 13. This Jagandar Shah, he spent most of his time in company with the lady Lord Kanwar. 
and Parukshya, he ruled from 1713 to 1719. He was a puppet in the hands of Syed brothers. The Mughal ruler was a puppet in the hands of the Syed rulers. The Syed rulers, they deposed Parukshya and they were also put to death. And Rafi would Darajit and Rafi would Daula. They ruled only six months. And Mohammed Shah, the next ruler, Mohammed Shah 1719 to 1748. He had loose habit. In his period itself, he saw the disintegration of the Mughal Empire. And uh, next ruler Ragamad Shah, this 1748 to 1754, another weak uh, inefficient ruler was deposed and imprisoned and blinded. Alamkir Sakin, 1754 to 1759, he was also murdered. And Shah Alam Sakin, he ruled from 1759 to 1806. And the next ruler, Akbar Sakin, 1806. To 1837 and Badur Shah Sakin 1837 to 1857 he became the pensioner of the last three rulers Shah Alam Sakin, Akbar Sakin, Badur Shah Sakin were the pensioners of East India Company. Next the intrigues of nobles. The nobles, the court of Delhi after the death of Aurangzeb offer an unbroken tale of, tale of plots and counter plots on the part of powerful nobles. That means in the court of Delhi, two principal factions of nobles. One is Turani or Central Asian faction consisted of Sunni Muslim. That is in the Muslims itself, there were two groups, Shia Muslim and Sunni Muslim. And Persian nobles, mostly Shias. They were Amir Khan, Isha Khan and Sadat Khan. And uh, these two groups were hostile and the interest of the empire were sacrificed. That is the, the nobles, they plotted, plotted against each other and uh, they neglected the interest of the empire. The Mughals were not able to control this Ashabja, Safter Jang and Sadat Khan and Syed brothers. They were constantly involved in plotting and planning. Next, wars of succession. This is the most important reason for the downfall of the Mughal Empire. Uh, what were the factors? That is, there was no law of succession. In the Mughal dynasty, in the Mughal rule, there was no law of succession. The throne belonged to, normally the throne belonged to successful prince. For example, Aurangzeb had four sons. And Shah Jahan also had four sons. But uh, these, uh, they selected the successful prince to the throne. So automatically there was a war of succession almost after the death of every emperor. That is every emperor, after the death of every emperor there was a war of succession uh, held during the Mughal rule. So these became more frequent after the death of Aurangzeb. And the seven, uh, during the rule of Aurangzeb, seven fratricidal war of succession. Right? Fratricidal means there was uh, the, among the brothers, right? among the brothers war of succession was conducted. No love for affection was left in the royal family. That is among the brothers there was no love for affection. The royal court became a hunting ground for political intrigues. And nobles of the court conspired each other and kept on placing their candidates on the legal throne. Next, inefficiency of the army. The Mughal state was a military state, but the army itself had become inefficient. What was the reason for that? The army was organized more or less on feudal basis. The soldiers owed allegiance to the Mansabdar rather than the emperor. The soldiers, they respected the Mansabdar rather than the emperor. 
the weakening of the mughal army had become apparent in the time of shah jahan because at the time they failed the army was failed to retake kandar from persians they lost kandar during the time of shah jahan and the another important reason for uh, the inefficiency of the army method of payment through the mansabdars it was defective the state could not have direct control over the troops the mansabdars only controlled the troops mughal artillery you know this artillery was introduced by babar for the first time in india this artillery because of the artillery only babar got victory in the battle of panipat but this artillery in the time of later mughals that was crude it was ineffective against the guerrilla tactics of the marathas not only the guerrilla tactics but also the europeans the armies of the europeans and the composition of the mughal army this uh, this was the chief defect in the army what why what was the defect mean the soldiers were drawn from central asia for hired basis the hired soldiers without any coherence or loyalty to the army they were unfit and custodians of the interest of the empire and uh, degenerated mughal nobility this was the next important reason mughal india produced great nobles before 1707 for example bairam khan rajaman singh shahbesh khan todar mal they were the great personalities during the period of akbar greatly contributed to the growth of mughal empire but with the decline in the character of later mughal emperor deterioration set in the mughal nobility also that means later mughal emperor they were they are not having good character they always involved in their private life in their personal life so the deterioration set in the mughal nobility also next nobility this nobility was no match for the tough marathas and the rajput the marathas and the rajputs they are waiting for an opportunity so this time this weakness the nobility degenerated nobility was the time for the marathas that is opportunity for the marathas and the rajput all the surplus produce of a fertile land was swept into the coffers of the mughal nobility the mughal nobility lived in a life of luxurious life and the law of the lapse of property of the nobles to the state that is after the death of the noble the property also went to the uh, state government state the lapse of property they are time uh, finished and the next one is financial bankruptcy this financial bankruptcy was another important reason for the downfall of the mughal empire akbar had set up a good financial system and because of his financial system people lived in a prosperous condition the share of the state was one third of the produce of the land but it was raised one half of the produce of land during the time of shah jahan next financial bankruptcy had begun during the reign of aurangzeb on account of his deccan wars he say he constantly waged war against the uh, deccan deccan area that is uh, the bijapur golconda deccan uh, uh, deccan rulers it went on increasing year by year because of his constant war this financial bankruptcy in was increasing year by year the emperors began to depend heavily on their wazis wazis means prime ministers aurangzeb was not in a position to pay the troops regularly toward the towards the end of his reign he was not in a position to pay the troops regularly a lot of money was wasted on magnificence of court and costly building that was by because of that was by shah jahan he constructed many buildings 
and uh, he conducted the court in a magnificent way so a lot of money wasted on that so the financial condition became still worse under later moguls unwieldy size of the empire you know akbar he ruled a strong a vast too vast a empire uh, next to akbar aurangzeb he also ruled a vast empire so the mughal empire had become too vast and only a strong tactful and a diplomatic ruler could govern such an extensive empire the later mughal rulers they lacked all these qualities widespread administrative corruption that is in the mughal and mughals were famous for their administration especially akbar was famous for his benevolent administration akbar humayun they were all famous for uh, their administration but uh, this of later mughals the officials and their and their subordinate from the highest to the lowest made fortune for fortunes for taking bribes it is stated that a personal attendant of mughal emperor amassed rupees 12 lakhs in cash besides several valuable articles and a house that is a personal attendant of the mughal emperor he got a valuable articles as well as a house along that he also amassed 12 lakhs in cash even the emperors were not about bribery and the mansabdari system and its drawbacks you know very well girls this mansabdari system was introduced by akbar and uh, this mansabdari system went uh, good during his time but now the later mughals the mansabdari system degenerated in the time of later mughals mansabdars they lived a life of luxury and the mass of the people were human sheep that means the mansabdars they lived a life of luxury under him there was a group of people that is group of soldiers they were considered as mass of the people were human sheep next alien mughal rule that is alien mughal rule means the mughal rule in india was foreign in origin that is you know babar from kabul from you know the capital of afghanistan from kabul only he came to india he came to india and settled and founded the mughal dynasty and this mughal rule it did not take its root from the soils of this land soils of india the orthodox muslim had their hearts in arabia and persia that is the muslim they had their feeling they had their feeling and hearts in arabia and persia an empire formed on such basis could depend only on its military strength the mughal empire they depend only on its military strength that military was also had become weakened during the later mughals okay the next reason lack of effective education and training there was no provision for good education and training for the sons of the mughal nobles according to jn sarkar they were too much petted by the enemies and made servant and passed through a sheltered life from birth to man- manhood that is from birth birth to manhood they crossed a life of luxurious life and they got they have got no education education character there was no provision for good education and training for the sons of the mughal nobles next invasions of nadir shah and ahmed shah abdali this denotes what that is the weak mughal ruler these two invaders india several times defeated the mughals weakened the army humiliated the rulers and looted the country and sounded the death knell of the mughal empire this nadir shah from persia he invaded india in the year 1738 to 39 this ahmed shah abdali he invaded india successively 
the famous peacock throne uh, the peacock throne uh, designed by fashioned by uh, shah jahan that was uh, uh, this ahmed shah abdali he got that peacock throne to himself and uh, next reason emergence of new powers you know the weaken of the uh, weak successes and uh, character of the mughal rulers that led to the emergence of new powers Uh, who were the new powers the sikhs in punjab the marathas in the south the rajputs in rajasthan the rogillas in rogilkan and the jats in agra and nearby areas established their own independent kingdom this denotes what the mughal empire began to decline nizam ul mulk in hyderabad and alivardi khan in bengal and sadat khan in out they also declared their independence next coming of the european nations in india as already i told you the in the court of jahangir two english captains came and uh, they got concessions and following that many european countries that is you know the portuguese were the first people and several european powers began to interfere in the affairs of india the english among the europeans that is the portuguese and the dutch and the danes and the french and the english among the five powers the english became a leading power after securing victories in battle of plassey in 1757 and battle of baksar in 1764 this was the conquest of bengal in 1757 and 1764 by the britishers so this was also another important reason for the downfall of the mughal empire and the next one is neglect of the sea power the mughals did not realize the importance of a strong naval power you know uh, shivaji used navy but the mughals they did not realize the importance of a strong naval power so they therefore were defeated at the hands of the european powers the mughals were defeated at the hands of the european powers next impact of reformers in maharashtra the spirit of independence was encouraged by religious and social reformers like guru ram das you know during the time of delhi sultanate we have seen the bhakti movement various reformers in punjab the sikh gurus emphasized the preservation of the faith against the all odds all odd mean all difficulties the sikh gurus that is in punjab the sikh gurus emphasized the preservation of the faith and the likewise the satnamis and others they kindled a spirit of freedom of worship they also induced the people to have a spirit of freedom of worship and the stagnation and deterioration in agriculture there are several instances of peasant discontent that is peasant mean you know farmers they were dissatisfied with the policy of aurangzeb as well as the noble the oppression of the nobles oppression by nobles which resulted in the stagnation of agriculture and uh, next uh, the last important reason uh, absence of the spirit of political nationalism among the people of india there was the absence of political nationalism so it was the most important causes of the downfall of the mughal empire so in this uh, lesson uh, this uh, this integration of the mughal empire what was the reason means uh, mainly aurangzeb he himself was responsible and the coming of the europeans Uh, they are uh, that that was also another important uh, reason for that uh, 
um, this downfall the later Mughal rulers. These three are the most important. In analyzing the causes, uh, we found that these are the most important reasons for the downfall of the Mughal Empire.